Um, I've been asked to make a video showing uh, how to put the neck onto a t-shirt. So what I thought I'd do is start at the beginning and work through it. Now this is not going to be a sew along type video. I'm just going to take you through um, bits of information that I use and work for me. So as you can see, I'm um, all set out. I have my pattern pieces that I've traced off for the size that I want um, and the fabric I'm going to use. So I'm going to do um, orange neck band and sleeves and uh, the pattern is going to be the main body colour. This will have um, straight cuffs and waist, no bands on those, just a neck band. Okay. Um... I've shown you that we have everything laid out and a couple of things I want to do before we get going. Um, because I know with COVID this year, we have a lot of new sewers out there who are just getting going and doing fantastic stuff. A little bit nervous maybe, but might not know the terms of things. Um, not that I know all the terms, but there are things that it's helpful to know. Like when you get your little piece of... Um, I, I believe this is a cotton lycra, your t-shirting fabric. Okay, this is half a metre. I'm going to make a t-shirt for my two-year-old grandson. He's very skinny, but he's longer. So I checked the measurement, his measurements against theirs. And for him at his age, because he's a skinnamalink, he needs a 12 months, but I've added extra onto the sleeve and onto the body for him because he's a little longer um, but he's only very skinny so these are the pattern pieces that I've traced off the main pattern I stuck together using grease proof paper you know the paper that you use for your baking baking parchment you have to use a pencil on it nothing else will write on it maybe one of those posh felt tips but a pencil works fine um, so these are my pattern pieces now, getting back to the fabric. So I've got half a metre of this lovely builder fabric. He's mad about building things and cars and trucks. Um, and as I said, the, these are both cotton lycra. There's half a metre in each. And it's what you would uh, these days call a t-shirt fabric. It's about t-shirt weight. It has stretch going across and it has stretch going down. Not quite as much. But you can see is what's called the recovery rate. So if I stretch it, it comes back. And it comes back to normal. Okay. And on the pattern, you can see quite easily which way up it goes. Now, if you put that to one side and we go for the, the um, plane. Well, you've no idea really when you start cutting into it, have you? So... Normal way to use things is your side seams and on here it's it looks like it's got a bit of glue down it or something that they use to stiffen it. Um, so it's always good to try and leave the side seam on at least one side if you can so you know which way your fabric goes. Okay, but always remember it normally, not exclusively, but normally stretches a little bit more between the two salvage edges. So across the cloth, so the wide part, they're the salvage edges, and you would normally find the grain of your cloth runs down parallel to your selvage, okay? So where this one's printed, and sometimes you can get mixed up, sometimes they're not printed correctly, but this one is printed correctly. And so the, the grain on this fabric runs down parallel to the selvage, okay? And that's, we've got stretch both ways on this one as well as the other. But a little bit more on the across, okay? So that's about your fabric. I'm going to lay this out now um, and come back to you when I've got it laid out, okay? I'm doing the swank t-shirt here and on my pattern pieces... You will see I have marked out that this needs cutting against a fold. So this is the um, Swank t-shirt back. I write this information on here so I know what I've got. And both the back and the front need cutting against the fold. 
So what I'm going to show you here, because I can't just put them, but I could put them on at both ends and then leave all the middle bit, but that's a waste to me. And I want to leave one selvage intact if I can, just so I know for future use. So I've got my pattern piece. I'm going to roughly look at the width and then I'm going to pull the fabric back. I'm trying to do it so you can see this because I'm, I can't do overhead. It's a bit of a one-man band here with the videoing, so uh, we'll do the best we can. So my pattern's here on my fabric. I'm just leaving a little bit at the edge, but then I'm folding it. I want to make sure that I'm folding it with the pattern reasonably straight. So I choose one thing, um, and this is a digger. And if I was doing an adult version, you can see the pattern repeats, it's much easier. Um, so you can use that as you fold down it. But I'm happy with that. It looks roughly even to me. Having said that, I think I might need a little bit more. I am cut. I am going into the salvage there, so actually I think I'm going to take just a little bit wider. Now, in the uh, old days when I first started sewing, we were always told to fold your fabric the right side together to cut. That's great, apart from when you're doing kiddie stuff these days. What you want to do is you want to, uh, what they call fussy cut. And I want to make sure that he's got something that sits really nicely in the middle of the front or the back, whichever I'm doing. So on this, it's this orange lorry here. There. That's so half of it's there and half is on this side. So I know if I more or less centre that on the front, well, sorry, the back piece, when I cut it, it will sit in the back and there's a focus on the piece. So when people look at him, uh, their eyes will naturally be drawn to the centerpiece. And because I'm very mean, I won't cut right in the middle of the fabric to get the one that I want. So that's the one that's nearest on the piece of fabric I'm using. So that's the one he's getting. There might be a better one. We might get it on the front. And I'm going to try and put it either as high or as low as possible. Um, without wasting the top and bottom because it comes in for bands and all sorts of things. So I'm going to, this more or less falls ab about perfect for the center. Now I'm a pin girl, okay? I know you can use weights and this is my pin cushion, one of them. It's a chicken, I love it. It's filled with rice, it's brilliant. Um, and I can drop it on my piece and pin round it. So a lot of people use pattern weights. You can make them yourself. They're really cheap. It's great scrap busting. These are little squares that you make. Well, it's quite a big square. I have smaller ones. Let me show you. I do have smaller ones. So you can use quite small scraps to make them. And they're just little chickens that have tails on them. Really easy to make. You'll find them on YouTube. Put a uh, chicken pin cushion. Comes up. I'm not going to do it for you. It's already there. They're brilliant. So, I don't use clips. I have clips. Wonder clips are great for some things. I prefer pins, though, for most things. But if you're a clip person, go clip. Um, also, I like to use scissors. I do have the rotary cutters, and you will see me use them. I will cut my uh, band, my neck band, using the rotary cutter because I can get it almost perfect using a ruler, but I'm not very good at the free hand. So being an older person, I go for the pins, pins and scissors for me. So I'm going to pin this back piece on. I've decided where it's going. I've got my piece centered. So I'm going to pop my pins in around it. I don't need millions of them. You just need to hold it in place. Normally poking towards the corners. So it's your corners that don't move. If you're doing adult size things, you do need a lot more pins. But on children's size things, you don't really. Four or five will do. So that is pinned on. I'm going to cut it out. And then I'm going to place the front piece on. 
doing exactly the same thing. Okay, so that's my scissors. Um, as we go on, hopefully, if you all keep watching my videos, um, I might get a bit more um, fancy with the videoing and be able to do it from above. Who knows what might happen? But at the moment, it's a bit Heath Robinson. And as long as you're all right, you can understand what I'm doing. I think we're all right there. Now, that's my back piece cut out on the fold. Okay? And I'm going to show you a little bit closer on the pan. If you are a newbie and you're just starting out, um, I've marked on here there are dots, as you can see in pencil. Now, these... Um, on some patterns, these would be notches, but on this pattern, they've chosen to use dots and you would use them for matching up this raglan sleeve. Okay. And the fact that the back has one dot at the neck and the front piece, the back has a filled in dot and the front piece has an open dot. So you know which is which, because once you've got these cut out, the sleeves can be a bit tricky. Now, I've been sewing for a long time and I don't want to show you bad ways, but I won't use these. I'll just use pins. I'll show you as we go along. But if you're more comfortable and you really should learn to use these first, use these markings, okay? So, that's my back piece. I'm going to fold over again. I can see more or less from this side. It's the tipper again, probably going to end up on the front, or I might. I might be able to, I can't, let's see. Oh, actually, I think I might be able to squeeze on. Oh, I might go for the big tipper again. Is it the same tipper? Yeah, it is the same tipper. Or I could move it down and get the blue digger on, but if I go for the tipper and the blue digger, in the middle of it, but not central top and bottom, I can get them looking great too. So I'm just going to fold this over. So I'm going to go for the man on the bottom and the man on the top as my middle line. So this little man here in the red shirt, he's further down as well. So I'm going to use him and fold him in half. And the same half at the bottom, which should say that my print is straight. I'm going to put my front piece on, writing down. It doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as it goes on. Um, and I'm going to use in between the digger and the blue thing. So I've moved this down a little bit. So it won't match at the sides. Okay. It's highly unlikely it's going to match at the sides. Um, Sometimes you do need to do matching, and sometimes it doesn't really matter. Uh, on this T-shirt for my grandson, it doesn't really matter, if I'm honest. Uh, he'll just be happy to have the diggers on the front. Right. So I'm going to cut this one out. I'm going to... The sleeves are straightforward. I'll just show you, because I'm not going to show you me cutting those out. On the sleeves... We've got uh, the hemline marked on down here. Um, we've got the grain marked on, so you would make sure that goes on your grain. When you have a fold on a pattern, that normally indicates the grain line too. Um, so I'm going to cut the two sleeves out, and then I'm going to come back and just run you through cutting the neckband out. 